If you're spooked by high gas prices and you're thinking about buying an EV, watch this video first. Because today we're looking at how gas prices are causing people to look into EVs more than ever before. But why you shouldn't buy an EV. I'll also explain how the growth of EVs will impact gasoline prices. In the first quarter, just 12 years ago, 395 electric vehicles were sold worldwide. In the last quarter of last year, more than 1.7 million were sold. Meanwhile, gas prices have been increasing by the double digits worldwide. Want to see how much this is causing people to look at EVs? One car industry analysis stated that interest in EVs has soared 70% since January of this year. So we're talking leaps and bounds. A major factor driving the spike in interest in EVs, people's desire for stability. More specifically, the ability to manage their fuel budgets. Most people accepted that gas prices won't be going down anytime soon. That's why EVs are attractive to people who are looking for a cheaper and more realistic option. In 2020, the EV market was worth $163 billion. By 2030, it's predicted to be worth a massive $824 billion. That's a growth of more than five times in just 10 years. Did you know that many EV owners were still able to sell their cars and actually recovered their initial purchase price? In other words, they broke even, and some even made a profit. Profit. And that's all because of the current high EV demand and due to car inventory shortage of normal cars. But here's why you shouldn't buy an EV. This might surprise you. Just because demands of EV is currently high doesn't mean you should go out and get one. Actually, it's just the opposite. You shouldn't. They're not cheap and they aren't getting any cheaper. If you were to go out and buy yourself an EV today, you'd find that it's actually about 25% more expensive than buying a combustion engine car. A whole one third of the cost of an electric vehicle is its battery. Now, I know many people will say, won't the gasoline cost savings make up for it? Well, here's the thing. In America, most consumers hang on to their cars for an average of 12 years before they sell it and get another one. So you have to ask yourself, in those 12 years, will you save enough in gasoline costs to justify EV high price? Honestly, the only benefit to having the EV is the environmental advantage on the road, but that's it. So you won't really save on gasoline costs in a significant way to offset the car price. And this next fact is going to surprise you. EV production itself actually impacts impacts the environment more negatively than the manufacturing of a combustion engine car. Many people don't even think about this. And this is especially true for the production of EV batteries. That's the worst part. New studies have left people questioning just how green EVs really are. The carbon footprint of a car starts long before an owner even sits in a driver's seat for the first time. Because in reality, it starts when a car is physically being built. You can't take that out of the equation, even though many car companies don't mention it. They're only selling you with the good side of the story. They're not sharing the other half, which goes to show they're not telling the whole truth. The truth is that battery-run EVs are the most advanced zero-emissions vehicle technology available in the market when the car is on the road. But many have been questioning the so-called blind advocacy that people have for EVs because most people have no idea how badly EV batteries damage the environment or harm human rights. It's not as simple as electric is good, combustion engine is bad. The most common EV battery is made up of lithium, cobalt, nickel, and manganese. Cobalt and lithium mining are currently in some pretty big troubles in Congo, South America, and China. That's because their mining is implicated in pollution, child labor, ecosystem destruction, and even human rights abuses in these countries. For example, let's talk about the Congo. In 2016, investigations revealed that at least 100,000 and up to 150,000 miners in Congo were using their hands and basic tools to dig hundreds of feet underground in search of cobalt-rich rocks. And that number included some 40,000 children. Some were as young as six years old. Investigations found deaths, injuries, respiratory diseases, and even birth defects caused by exposure to high levels of toxicity. It's tragic and sad, and it doesn't stop with human rights cases. But it's also causing serious environmental devastation in countries like Argentina and Bolivia. Here's the thing. One ton of lithium requires 500,000 gallons of water. But local farmers in these countries are forced to source water from other areas. And so, we see exploitation of indigenous communities, regional wildlife, vegetation, soil, air, and water. And in some cases, damage is beyond repair. And if you think all oh, this is bad, well, this is just the beginning, and it gets worse. The thing is, lithium is toxic, flammable, and highly reactive. So fast forward to old or bad EV batteries. Posing lithium ion batteries isn't easy. You can't just dump them in a landfill, but you can't just throw them in a recycling bin either. Disposing of them can be very dangerous for workers themselves, and especially for the environment. In fact, 
fact, many researchers agree that the environmental impact of lithium-ion EV batteries often outweighs the benefits of foregoing fossil fuels. There's even a story twist. Did you know that every single stage of an EV's life cycle requires fossil fuels? Every single one. Just think, mining equipment, materials processing facilities, and factories that produce lithium-ion batteries run on so-called dirty fossil fuels. And EVs run on electricity that is mainly produced and distributed using, you guessed it, fossil fuels. One Danish environmentalist calculated that over its first 37,282 miles, a long-range EV will emit more carbon dioxide than a gas car. Can you see the irony in all of this? And it's not just experts who are worried about an EV's real environmental impact. Consumers are too. A recent survey showed that more than half of all people who don't yet own an EV are worried about the environmental impact of how they are manufactured. Can we blame them? So really, there's no real direct benefit otherwise for consumers. In fact, there are much more disadvantages of getting an EV than owning one. For one, there's a high upfront purchase price to get an EV compared to buying a combustion engine car. The average transaction price for an EV today exceeds $56,000. That's roughly $10,000 higher than the overall industry average for a $46,000 gasoline car. Second, just think about how much it costs to replace an EV battery. Let's say you need to replace the battery in your Tesla Model S. Up front, we're looking at a battery cost of anywhere between $12,000 to $15,000. Then you add the extra $525 to $2,600 for labor costs for the technicians to actually replace the battery in your car. All in all, we're looking at a huge $13,000 to $17,000 for a full battery replacement. Do you have that kind of jump change? There's something most people don't realize. There are actually far less design options for an EV compared to gas cars. One reason is because EV makers prioritize aerodynamics rather than design or style. Aerodynamics are much more critical in an EV than in a combustion engine car. That's because it impacts an EV's driving range. So if you ever wondered why Lucid Air and Tests look vaguely similar, now you know. Another disadvantage has to do with weight. EVs weigh more because of their batteries, which is the heaviest part. Heavier cars need bigger brakes and longer braking distances. They also need proper tires. The less mass a car has to move, the better it handles. And the lighter your car, the less damage your car will suffer in a collision. Although statistically speaking, passengers and EVs are less likely to be injured in a car crash than those in similar gas power vehicles. Of course, the exact opposite is true of the people that are hit by an EV car, which weighs more and will do more damage to their car. But don't forget range anxiety. So does a heavier EV have a negative impact on a car's driving range? To give you an idea, look at a Tesla Model S. This car weighs up to 2.3 tons and it packs a 1,433 pound battery. It has a driving range of 405 miles. The BMW i3 weighs almost 2,972 to 3,309 pounds total. And it only packs a 450 pound battery. And its driving range is 99 to 126 miles. From these stats alone, it could seem that the answer to that question is no. But you can actually find a different opinion about EV and driving range depending on where you look. Lastly, let's talk about EV's charging time. It's not like pumping gas, it takes a few minutes. Charging your EV is a different story. At home charging, it takes hours and hours. And even if you were to choose the fastest charging method, which is the DC fast charging, it's not quick. At minimum, we're looking at a charging time of 30 minutes. Imagine pumping gas for that long. By the way, if you were ever to go to a charging station, it won't be as easy to find one as you would a gas station. Compared to the amount of gas stations, there just aren't as many available charging stations at the moment. Despite all these reasons, EVs are on the rise. So how will this growth impact gas prices? Well, that depends on who you ask. There's no singular agreement among analysts right now. The first perspective is a bit optimistic. Some say this will have zero impact on gas prices. A major reason is due to what's called demand elasticity. That's how sensitive a demand for a product of service is to price fluctuations. If a product is very elastic, a small fluctuation in price will cause a large decrease or increase in demand for the product. If a product is inelastic, the opposite is true. Some analysts believe that gasoline is fairly inelastic, meaning that even a large increase in price won't impact demand. They apply the same principle to EVs. People will still need gas as price and demand won't change even with millions more EV on the road in the coming years. But there's a second perspective that rise in EV adoption will put a dent on oil demand. Last year, one research found that all types of EVs were displacing more than 1 million barrels of oil demand per day. Some analysts expect that oil demand could be as low as 21 million barrels less per day by 2050 due to EVs. But for now, the takeoff in EV sales hasn't made much of a dent in composition of global auto fleet yet. The third perspective is quite an alarming one. Some analysts believe that the rise of EVs will cause the next major oil crisis. There comes a time with good technologies when buying the alternative no longer makes sense. Just think of smartphones in the 2000s. Color TV 
TVs in the 70s, even gasoline cars in the early 20th century. These things all displaced other existing technologies at the time. When a major technological shift happens, the whole world changes, and most critics agree that 2020s will be the decade of the EV. But not all critics agree that the shift will be a positive one, specifically for the oil industry. In the next few years, companies like Tesla, Chevy, and Nissan all plan to start selling long-range EVs in the $30,000 range. And they're not the only companies investing billions of dollars to develop dozens of new models. Yet, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, claims that EVs will only make up a minuscule 1% of cars in 2040. Despite that forecast, some analysts say EVs could even displace oil demand of 2 million barrels a day as early as 2023, but others say 2028. Either way, that's still a significant amount. That much oil demand displacement would create a glut of oil equal to what triggered the oil crisis back in 2014. Those in the oil industry are skeptical. They say that for this to happen, EV manufacturers will really need to bring down the price of EVs. And drivers in countries like China and India will have to start making the switch to EV from gasoline and diesel. But either way, if the oil crisis does happen, it will only be the beginning because forecasters expect it to last years, not months. But you tell me, how do you think EV adoption will impact gasoline prices? If you don't already have an EV, do you plan on getting one? Why or why not? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.